Hey everyone, we're back again, and today we are going to give you a preview of my entire 2020 21PHX Phoenix Bass Boat. This is the rig that I take on all year, all across the country. I'm gonna show you everything that I've put on it, that I've changed out, modified, that I didn't modify, inside of the boat, outside of the boat. I'm gonna show you all the details. And we're also gonna take it out on the water, and I know you can't ride with me, but you can ride with me. So you wanna check out my 2020 Phoenix PHX 21, stay tuned. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start at the front of the boat and basically work my way back on all the accessories that I have to everything that I do to the boat. So the first thing that I'm gonna start off with is obviously the trolling motor. We're still running the Minn Kota Altrex. I've used it for years, works great. We got the Bob's prop nut on here, big, big deal, easy. This is what's so key about this. You can slide this thing off in no time. So just like this year at the Classic, I had fishing line wrapped up in my trolling motor, uh, the prop, so I could spin that off. You can basically just, boom, you need that pin, but you can take this off, and look, I even got some stuff. So that makes it really quick and easy. The Bob's prop nut, super, super quick, and it also makes the prop quieter in the water, which is a big, big deal. Next up, we got the trolling motor handle. This is from Bob's. It's called the Big D from Bob's. So this is an awesome cable. It is a steel cable that you're not gonna break. We've all been there before breaking trolling motor cables and usually it's happening at the worst time in a tournament or something. So I always, always replace my handle as soon as I get the boat with the Big D. Don't have any issues with it. I run it all year, so that's a cool accessory. The one thing I do say is always put it underneath here and lock it down. That way it's not bouncing around going down the road, but that's super easy to do. So next to the Bob's handle, we have the Bob's deck saver, which is uh, awesome for the trolling motor pedestal to, to, to come down on, and it's gonna rest on that, and it's gonna keep your carpet from basically wearing a hole out in it. So that always keeps it uh, basically safe and keeps the carpet from ripping up. The other cool thing that I like to do to my trolling motor, kind of trick it out. See this material right here? That is not factory. That is a sight fisherman's dream, okay? So this is very sticky material, almost like a grip tape. It's from Gator Guards. It's their Gator Skins non-skid material that you can cut out and you could put on your trailer, you can do anywhere. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna put it on my trolling motor because I stand it on there when I'm sight fishing or when I'm getting a lure back or anything else. So I love, love, love that deal. I started doing that this year for the first event at St. John's, so. And on the trolling motor, I'm running the Lowrance transducer and I only have one Lowrance unit up front. Uh, that's just what I've ran. I'm comfortable with it. Doesn't take up a lot of space. I've got it mounted right to the bracket. It's uh, super easy to install right in a good location that I can be looking at. And I don't really like the flush mounts just because the units can get hotter that way. So having them up and out away, from, you know, so they can breathe is a big, big deal. Another thing that I have, and a lot of people ask me about it, is this right here is actually a ram mount for my iPad and I'll run an iPad at uh, certain events that I wanna have Google mapping for. So I have a nine inch iPad that I set up there so then I can use that. Next, we have the hull of the boat. Very, very, very important. Obviously we have this signature wings by Phoenix. A lot of questions get asked about the keel shield that I put on by Gator Guards with the wings, which I have a video coming out that you can check out, but the Keel Shield is a must have for any bass boat, uh, for any boat in general, because it makes life so much easier. Obviously it doesn't come from the factory with a, uh, any type of Keel Shield on it. Do it yourself, takes about an hour tops. I can park on the boat ramp, I can go fishing shallow and bump the bottom with it, and it's not gonna get all scuffed up. So the next thing you realize about my Phoenix is that it's got a huge deck space on it and this is this is probably one of my favorite things about the boat is how much deck space you have uh, the lip on the edges is not very high at all so for me flipping and pitching is super super convenient uh, and i have everything I, I can fit as many rods up here as i need to probably more than what i should but it's a huge huge deck so that makes a big difference when i'm up front doing everything and uh you know, obviously I got my lockers here. One thing that I do to my rod locker, I know you've probably seen, if you watched the video before from last year's boat, I like to take out 
the rod tree holder. And that's a great feature to have. I just like to have more rods in my locker than probably most should have, but I do. And what I do is I end up using all of these. You can throw in all kinds of different foam material. I put in here to keep my rods and reels from banging around. Keeps your line good, but I can fit probably 30 combos in there once I take out the rod tree and the, uh, the holder up front. So that makes a big difference on how many rods I can have. So the other really cool feature is the coffin style lid. Instead of being all divided up, it's just one giant locker lid and I can fit all of my tackle, all of my boxes with baits, all can be in here. Uh, I have a, my little spare holder. I don't even know what it's called, but I love it because I can put it in here. I can take it out. I can remove it, put all my soft plastics here. I've got line. And uh, as you can see, I don't really have a whole lot of tack. I do, but I don't. I've been trying to cut down on how much tackle that I have in my boat at one time. I, I'll, I'll take tackle in and out but I try not to have a bunch and bunch of tackle just laying around in my boat to just cart all over the country. So that's one thing that I've tried to do. But the other cool thing is this uh, bait holder here. They put in a foam uh, bait holder. So now you can stick your baits up there. Over time, this foam will get worn out. And all you can do is rip that out and put a replacement piece in there and it's brand new all over again. And obviously I haven't even started to wear this thing out. It'll last all year. A cool feature to have to, to put those baits that you know, that you're gonna use for, throughout the day or you want to try, you can just stick them up there. So the other rod locker, basically I put all of my rain gear. I've got my life jackets and everything like that. Obviously a fire extinguisher, everything. But this is something that everybody should have. I just put this in a waterproof case. And this is a little jumper box. I'm not sponsored by these guys. This is just one that I have. There's all kinds of different brands. This is a, a pretty small compact one, but basically one that could start my truck. So I know it would start my Mercury engine in a time of need. So very, very key to have those on board. And I, I keep it up here because it's not gonna get as wet as it would in the dry storage in the back. That's really, really important to have, especially if you're a tournament angler. But really, if you're an everyday angler, you gotta have something that would jump start your engine just in case your battery goes bad. So as you've seen, the Phoenix does not have a shortage of storage in this thing. And this is what I call my trash bin. And obviously this is a full on locker lid here, but you can stick uh, baits in there, whatever you wanted to do, day baits, plastics. But then obviously underneath here, uh, this is where I keep all my jig stuff. So I got all my uh, jig skirts. I got some homemade jigs and different skirting material, all pretty light. So I just keep all of that in there. And uh, like I said, that's just a huge box that you could put whatever you wanted to down in there. I used to put a lot of soft plastics, but I ended up moving that all to the back. The next portion of the boat, you have the step up here, which is obviously the cooler that I need to, to restock and put some more food in. Um, you got this lid here that I basically keep all of my markers, color baits up or little you know, dip and glow markers from Spike It, stuff like that. And they all pull out, which is super convenient. And this one, I keep pliers and other excess things, super glue, screwdrivers, and then it all comes out so I can have more stuff down here in the bottom. Lure retriever. There's like hidden doors in this thing everywhere. So that's, that's super convenient because it's not stuff that I need ready at hand all the time like it is over here for my scissors. It's the extra stuff that, you know, I don't have to have, but I always have it in my boat. So we're gonna go to the third rod locker, which is Every time I get a Marshall in my boat or someone that hasn't been in a Phoenix, they always love this when they can see that there's this much space in inside of this locker because I can put spare rods and other outfits in here that you know I, I may use only once or twice that day and stick them back down in there. But the other really, really, really cool thing is, hold on one second, fan system. That's right, come here and check this out. So this is a built-in fan system that basically runs fans and circulates air throughout the entire boat 
keeping the boat you know moisture free or when you have one of them soaker days and, and you know that there's moisture inside your lockers or you just want to make sure they're dry you can flip this fan on and you can see how much air is being pushed it's moving the skirt of that spinner bait. It runs through every single locker. It's gonna keep my equipment better. I'm not gonna run into all the mold or rust and stuff like that that can happen if you don't get those lockers cleaned out. So we got the console. The first thing you're gonna notice is the steering wheel on this thing. It is like a uh, sports car feeling type of steering wheel. It's super cool how they they added the addition of that, the emblem and everything, super neat. And obviously I got the two Lowrance HDS 12 units and I'll go into more on the water on how, which ones I have set up for which. Now I got my Smartcraft gauge, but I also have another RAM mount here that I use again for another iPad, but I have one designated just for Google Earth. So another really key feature that I love about my Phoenix is these switches. Basically just a panel and these switches, there's not a lot to go wrong with them. And that's because the guys at Phoenix, they fish, they get it, and they try to eliminate all the little things that could go wrong in a day of fishing. Basically a panel like this would be something that would go wrong really quick. There's no like keypad or anything. These are manual switches that you turn on and off. Really, really happy. You've never had any issues with that, which is a big deal having electric and water at the same time, so. But next up we have the day box, which obviously can be used as a step, but also, it is, keep all your essentials in it. It's uh, waterproof. They made it so now you can actually lock it, which is pretty cool because, you know, I'll keep my sunglasses in here, charging cables, flashlight, stuff to keep my graphs clean, obviously sunscreen, you got buffs, and my scale. So you can keep all that in there and it's out of the way. And I got a dry box as well. If it's raining really hard, you can throw your cell phone in there, but that's a super, super cool thing that they can, uh, now that we can lock it, you're safe. So on the back deck, we got the back two compartments. I've designated this one fully for soft plastics and extra spools of line. Just transferring weight to the back instead of putting all my soft plastics up there. I don't have any in here right now, spool of line. Basically, like I said, I'm keeping my boat light. Uh, same way with this side. Usually, I'm the only one in the boat most of the time, so I'm gonna have the heavier stuff on this side to counterbalance the weight in the boat. I got gloves. I've got an extra rope just in case. We got jumper cables, key key thing, zip ties. You never know if you need zip ties. A toolbox with only the essential tools. And I highly recommend using a flambo box to store it in because this is their, their waterproof ones. And I'm not sponsored by Flambo, but this is the rust proof technology that they have and it keeps your tools from rusting up. And this can sit in the back where moisture can get. So, so far the tools are still uh, rust free, which is important to me. And I only keep the tools that I need to work on the boat on the water. I don't need to take apart the boat. I only, you know, need to fix certain things, so. Key to have tools in your boat to change a prop out or whatever. And yeah, that's basically all that I have in that one. And also on the back deck, we have the Bob's deck plugs. It basically keeps water from going in where the seat posts are. If you don't have a seat in, they're easily removable. Just take a little flat screwdriver, can work it right out of there. And uh, yeah, keeps that excess water from getting in your boat when it's raining and stuff like that. So the other cool thing about the back deck of the Phoenix is they made it so you can actually get in and out of your compartment and work on things if you need to, which is super nice. They got these removable trays that I can sit here and pull out. Basically, I keep brush to keep my live wells clean, a little net to, to fish out any of the uh, grass or stuff. That's actually two very key things to have. Get you a little brush and a little net, clean your live wells out and you can scoop out all the grass. So, save you a lot of time. We got a hub assembly for the uh, prop. Got a spare prop for the trolling motor and we have another trolling motor cable. Basically try to have a spare of everything because you never know what can happen out on the water, especially in a tournament. So this is where all my electrical power comes from and this year I've made a big, big switch. I went from AGMs on my trolling motor batteries to uh, lithiums. Again, no sponsorship there by Battleborn. I purchased these and I couldn't be any happier with how well these things 
have worked uh, flawlessly so far. The power is unbelievable by how much I can get out of my trolling motor all day long, doesn't stop. I, I love how much room there is left in here. Owned other boats and it's always a you know, a pain in the butt and cramped to get to your batteries and everything. I'm still running an AGM cranking battery and, and then obviously I got a spare prop. Like I said, super, super clean. Uh, this is my power cord here. So I didn't go with a uh, out here and plug that in. Makes it uh, really convenient, simple. And uh, yeah, that's the back of the boat. And for the horsepower, we got the Mercury Pro XS four stroke, uh, the 250. This is my second year running this engine. Couldn't be happier with it. And you know, going from a two stroke, you would think it'd be kind of weird, but I really, really like and enjoy the power out of this thing. And this boat will run 75, 76 mile an hour, fully loaded because of this bad boy on the back. And then obviously we got the power pole blades. I can't say enough about these. They've basically what I've ran entirely for my shallow water anchoring system. The really cool thing about this year is they've made the brackets sturdier than ever before. So now you're not gonna have as much wiggle and you're locked in solid. They're gonna be really steady and be flawless on the water. And then obviously we got the Bob's Machine Shop action jack plate that he custom painted for me that you can get at the shop. Super, super neat paint scheme that they do basically matches my wrap and you can get it in all sorts of different colors. And the best thing about this jack plate is it's lightning fast, faster than any other jack plate on the market. And they build stuff for like racing engines, like high horsepower racing engines. So to build something for this little bass boat is nothing for them. So that's why I love this thing so much. I can get out of the whole shot, get out of super shallow water. I'm talking 10, I wouldn't say 10 inches. I'm talking a foot or more. I can jump up on pad with this engine on this 21 foot bass boat. So yeah, that's basically the back of the boat. I use these steering stops, to basically keep that from rocking. The motor toter is some brand that I don't even know, but we'll check it out. It is the uh, DD26 Fishing. Bought it off a of tackle warehouse um, because I needed one for the, the Mercury four stroke and so far it's working good. And yeah, it's a beefed up piece of equipment that's gonna keep it locked down on those long rides across the country. All right guys, you've seen the inside of my boat, you've seen the outside and everything that's on it. Let's go take it out in the water so I can show you some other reasons of why I love my Phoenix. All right, guys, we made it out on the water. A cold, blustery April day here in Ohio. It would only be snowing on the day that we would wanna to go to the pond to show you the boat. First off, we got our life jacket on and kill switch in. Very, very important, always do that. You have to listen to this Mercury four stroke start up. And I know I have an internal mic on, but. It just sounds bad to the bone. I'll let this thing warm up here for a second, but obviously the Bob's jack plate that we talked about, I found that the best setting uh, that I have on my jack plate for the 21 PHX is at number two. Whole shots and just normal running down the lake, I always keep that setting at number two. So we're gonna do a quick whole shot, jump up on pad, show you how quick this boat fully loaded. Uh, another person, obviously the camera operator, camera equipment, how fast this boat can jump up on pad. Very, very quick to jump out of the whole shot. Obviously having those lithium batteries makes a big difference. And uh, you know, this thing's got all the power you could ever need. Uh, we're cruising along 28 miles an hour and smooth. That's the biggest thing I can tell you about this boat is how smooth the ride is. Um, probably the, 
one of the best features and that I always brag about Phoenix's is how well the hull is made in its design. They construct their hull like no other. They're using a denser material that actually allows the hull to cut through wake and, and waves and stuff. That was one thing that I never knew before I went to a Phoenix or I actually rode in a Phoenix and, and that I liked so much about it. The hull is so rigid that it cuts through that stuff. So that's the biggest, biggest thing that I noticed when I first made the move to Phoenix. And again, that hull, the density of it, so you're not getting that vibration that shakes everything. It's a very stable, sturdy ride. Getting back into other boats now, it's like I really, I pick up on those things of, of how stable this one actually rides, cutting through that big water. So next, you know, having the two Lowrance units here at the console, uh, having my mount for my iPad, if my iPad was to be here, using it specifically for Google Earth, um, I always have my mapping on this one, and I always have my structure scan, 2D, and down imaging on this side. And this is pretty much the setup that I'm using year around everywhere I go. Maybe if it's a ledge fishing deal, I might have it set up a little bit differently. I may have this split, um, taking the 2D off and just having down and side. But overall, this, this is the setup that I have. Um, again, it's mounted straight into the dash of the original Phoenix, which is nice. I don't have to go out and buy a fancy, you know, uh, mount holder. Been using this same design for the past three years. Uh, it works great. So you know, that's pretty much my cockpit right there. You know, with the Lowrance, I have my .1 antenna right behind the seat. That's, uh, that's where you need to have them mounted on the Phoenix. Really any boat for that matter, that, that's gonna help triangulate when you're putting waypoints better than having it off the back of the boat. When I go up to the front to go fishing, I like to have my units, my, my custom key beeps on these Lowrance units set so I can hit the button and I put it on standby every time and I can jump up and go fishing and these two units aren't running while I'm up on the front for 20, 30 minutes at a time. And all you have to do is when you come back and sit down at the console, boom, boom, you're ready to go. And that those units weren't drawing power from your cranking battery. Uh, leaving them on all day, I mean, you can. Uh, they're made to do that, but making these things be out in the sun all day running, it's no different than a computer. So that just lets my units perform at their best. So moving up to the front of the boat, I love having this uh, four split screen while I'm, you know, basically everywhere I go. Again, it's the same deal. I have my uh, side imaging, which I stretch that over a little bit more. So my mapping and my side imaging is a little bit wider, but I also still have my 2D sonar and my down imaging. Um, and I run this when I'm fishing two foot of water. I run it if I'm fishing 20 foot of water the same way. And I'll pick up on things always having this side imaging on. Even if I'm fishing shallow going down the bank, I'll see stuff out to the left or right. You know, and then like I showed you, having that, uh, having that gator guard skin on there, that is, that's all, and it's slippery wet right now. My shoes are wet and been able to step up and stand on this. You know, I'm, I'm gonna jump down because I knew if I would fall in, y'all would laugh at me, so we're not gonna do that. All right, next we got the Phoenix Live Wells, and uh, the big thing that you notice about these is that they're separated. So that, I personally like separate Live Wells, so you can manage each one, know what's going on. You can have one empty, one with fish in it, or whatever you wanna do. Uh, I, I use these, uh, I think these are the Cow Coast call clips. Really, really like those. Those are a sturdy set of call clips. I've never had these any issues with these live wells. They perform great. Big thing with, with these is, is being able to fill them all the way up to the top to, to, to keep those fish protected while you're bouncing around in rough water or whatever. So And that the lids are insulated, which makes a big difference on those really hot summer days. You can have ice in your live wells and it's basically like a cooler. So that's a great, great addition by Phoenix and you know one that these summer fish will definitely enjoy. All right, guys, you've seen the inside of my boat. You've seen the outside of my boat. We got a storm blowing in. We got a wind blown point and I got to go fishing. I can't, I can't talk about my boat anymore. I got to go fishing, but hey, Thank you for watching, we really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We're gonna be coming out with more videos just like this one, and the 24-7 series will be coming out as well, so stay tuned, we really appreciate it. Thank you guys.
Let's go.